<laughs> Atheism, the Big Bang, the Glow Birth, and evolution are all a part of the same narrative. I don't think narrative is the right word. Theory would be better. Or even more accurate, the result of collected evidence and experimentation. How about we take a look at the definition of the word narrative. Narrative. A story or account of events, experiences, or the like, whether true or fictitious. You don't think that fits the definition? No. It's not a story or an account of events. It's a body of knowledge. Do you not view chronology or history as a story? I would potentially, yes. But that's not what we're talking about here. It's just data that falsifies alternatives. Uh, you haven't presented any data. All you've done is say so. That's pretty shallow on your part. Do you not view this list as a chronology that is believed by many atheists? No, it's not a chronology in the sense of a story. It's a series of bits of evidence which falsify alternatives. Something you have failed to substantiate so far. When I say chronology, I'm talking about chronological order. Many people believe the Big Bang happened before the Earth was formed. Here's Carl Sagan repeating that same narrative. The immense distances to the stars and the galaxies mean that we see everything in space in the past. Some as they were before the Earth came to be. Telescopes are time machines. Long ago, when an early galaxy began to pour light out into the surrounding darkness, no witness could have known that billions of years later, some remote clumps of rock and metal, ice and organic molecules, would fall together to make a place called Earth, or that life would arise and thinking beings evolve who would one day capture a little of that galactic light and try to puzzle out what had sent it on its way. Man, in his arrogance, thinks himself a great work worthy of the interposition of a deity. Darwin wrote telegraphically in his notebook, more humble, and I think truer, to consider him created from animals. We're Johnny-come-latelys. We live in the cosmic boondocks. We emerged from microbes and muck. Apes are our cousins. Our thoughts and feelings are not fully under our own control. We are lost in a great darkness, and there's no one to send out a search party. Given so harsh a reality, of course we're tempted to shut our eyes and pretend that we're safe and snug at home, that the fall is only a bad dream. We long to be here for a purpose, even though, despite much self-deception, none is evident. I have no interest in Sagan. Good! Dr. Sagan was the former host of The Cosmos back before Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson took over. Perhaps we can get your disinterest to roll over onto Neil Tyson and Stephen Hawking as well. They all preach the same narrative. If you want me to, I could get a whole row of dominoes for you to be disinterested in. Globe is fact. Big Ben and evolution are theories and atheism is a belief. No need to spread panic or false information like this. Panic? Do you see anyone hyperventilating over this? Now, you seem to have a lot more confidence in the globe than you do in evolution. Would you care to expound on why? It has spread in the Christian fervor that all of science is a made up lie, which is a form of cultural panic. All of science? I don't know anyone who claims that. That appears to be a straw man. There are actual arguments against evolution, including biogenesis which had not been able to be replicated. However, the globe is 100% objective. Basic phenomena only works in a globe. The sun only sets on a globe. Eclipses only happen in a globe. Tectonic plates only work on a globe. Anyone can determine the Earth is a globe using basic experiments. The globe affects everything and no other theory works. So you agree that evolution is not a fact, correct? A non-Christian who doesn't believe in evolution, but is a die-hard globe believer. That's interesting. First numbers of Christians know the Earth is a globe, including me. 
That doesn't mean it isn't part of the narrative outlined by people like Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, even Bill Nye the Science Guy. I don't confuse matters of fact with matters of faith, Kyle. I would recommend you consider doing this too. I find it very interesting just how much abiogenesis is a matter of faith, and how much Richard Dawkins contradicts himself on that matter. <laughs> Evolution is also a demonstrated fact. The truth really is out there. It's not a matter of opinion. Yeah. So uh, you believe it's liberating to uh, tell people that there is no God? I think a lot of people, when they give up God, feel a great sense of release uh, and freedom. Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um, by a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. And what was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right. How did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. no, no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. Evolution is a fact. It's documented by science. Right. How did that happen? I told you, we don't know. Believe these things because they're facts proved by evidence. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. no, no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. Atheism. The Big Bang. The Globe Earth. And evolution. All part of the same narrative. Hopefully this means if you take out one it should be that much easier to take out the next. This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science, with a shout out to our Flat Earth friends at jdecals.com. Believing in the Big Bang Theory is like believing a tornado can go through the woods and leave behind cabins.